Hello, I'm Allison Roman, and welcome to Solicited Advice, the podcast where I get to do what I love most, give advice. Each week, I'm joined by a very special guest and several very special advice seekers as we do our best to solve all of, or at least one of, your problems. This week's guest is Sam Fergoso. Sam hosts one of my favorite podcasts called Talk Easy, which is a sort of long form, in depth conversation podcast. Less of an interview show and more just like two people hanging out. And as a result, he has gotten some of the most, I think, wonderful, candid interviews from everyone from Beto O'Rourke to Janelle Monet to yours truly. And I think he just does a really incredible job of like talking to a person like they're a person and they just really open up. And as a result, I was like, you know, he would be kind of the perfect guest for this show because asking advice can be really vulnerable and people really enjoy being vulnerable around Sam. So I think it'll go really well. Um, New episodes of Talk Easy come out every Sunday and you can read some of his former work as a film critic and journalist from everywhere from Vanity Fair, The Atlantic, NPR. Um, But meanwhile, Talk Easy every Sunday. Tune in. It is so much harder than you think. Podcasting? Okay. Yeah, podca- podcasting, but specifically like the technical aspects of like hitting record and like clapping at the same time. And, like it just feels mm. overwhelming, which is why a lot of people do it in a proper studio like you do. I've had the you pleasure. <laughs> is this part of the very show? Very professional. Um, wait, you just asked who did my logo and I'm just going to, I'll use that as a natural plug, but Britt Cobb did the logo and he mm-hmm. is the designer that did my last cookbook which we yes. talked about yes. um sweet enough and i totally just adore him and and love his working style and also his creativity and it's I love so him. good that's great thank you yeah it's really good feels like well 70s do 80s you, yeah does it do you does the width bother you be honest <laughs> tough opening question um <laughs> no it doesn't bother me is it supposed to bother me no it bothers him as a graphic designer and it doesn't bother (laughs) me as like an editorial brain where i'm like well without the width it's just my but he's like so in sync with like letters and how they line up and it's like adding an additional it's like putting a hat on a hat Mm -hmm. a phrase that i keep using these days like for better or for worse i'm always like that's just like putting a hat on a hat i I don't even know what that means really putting a hat on a hat is like you don't need it Right. Nobody puts a hat on a hat. I don't know if I need the phrase hat on a hat. But it's like, fun. I, I, Say it. I, I, I like, well, a little hat and a hat. Wait, yeah, hat on a hat? <laughs> hat and hat? Hat on a hat. I don't know. And I'm not <clears throat> sure either, but, you know, I, at any rate, I'm, I'm confident that it, it gets the job done. So, but thank you for asking. Um, I feel like there's not enough time to talk about, like, when you make something, all the people that go into making the thing. Yes. Because It takes a village. Anything. It Maybe very it much takes a village. Yeah. yeah. It looks um, good. Thank you. I feel like your um when I did your podcast, I was like so taken with your calm demeanor. I was like, I would listen to this person say anything. I would listen to them <laughs> like read me a story, but I also felt like you knew what you were talking about, even if you didn't. And I feel like that is <laughs> kind of like that's I was like, you know who'd be really good at giving advice? <clears throat> Sam. I'm honored to be here. And yeah. um, when it comes to the episodes themselves, I definitely do an abundance of research. So like for the hour that we were talking, I definitely knew what we were talking about. But like once the mic stop, <laughs> all bets are off. Yeah. So who knows what's going to happen in this hour? Well, this one's still on microphone. Again, so long as the microphone is here, I think I'm okay. It's off mic. Well, that's... That's sort of the beauty of advice, especially with live callers, is that you actually don't know what they're going to ask you. Mm-hmm. So you don't and know like, either. I Sometimes I know, like, I have, like, a general overview, but I didn't know until, like, five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm are not any, preparing. Are any of... Okay. I'm just wondering, because you just came back from a honeymoon, right? Yeah, I did. Th- to go from honeymoon to podcasting with me is just... It's a tough transition. Some say the honeymoon never ended. You know what I mean? Some say... Who said that? Who said that? I, I don't, <laughs> Jen, the producer. We don't know. I don't know. But I, I did get back like two weeks ago, and at the time this will air, I have been a month. But yes, I think that that is the tough part about doing anything nice for yourself or any big mm-hmm. event. It's like 
there you can only delay the reality of your life like by so much like you can like getting back to a reality or a rhythm is there's no elegant way there's no graceful reentry. you just like are on a vacation and then you're really not so (laughs) i feel like if this is work i mean if you love what you do do you ever work a day in your life sam yes Mm -hmm. oh okay Mm -hmm. that wasn't like Um, that that bumper sticker is truly written by the most like fucked up capitalist i don't know who said that it is an honor to do something you love it is a great joy and it is definitely work it and is I feel like work. people should like the amount of time you spend with the newsletter, the books, now the show. I know you love it, but but yeah, it's too much work. It's a lot. <laughs> it it, it still well, takes I've, and asks and asks all of you. Yeah. yeah, but I think that like what I figured out recently, and like in <clears> the last year, is that it's really nice to ask for help, especially when you are asking for help from people who really know what they're doing. Bill Cobb, Brit Cobb, but yeah. <laughs> Brit Cobb. But I do like renaming him Bill. <laughs> Bill Cobb is a different person, like, spiritually. You know what I mean? I mean like, that like person a... probably does exist, but he's not graphic designing. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. He's whatever. I don't know. I think that's like a baseball player from the 30s who was probably racist, so let's not use that. Let's, yeah. let's go he with He definitely Brit. wore a swimming costume. <laughs> like, that. he was of that era, for sure. Um, but, yeah, but well, it does take, like, I think, like, Asking for help and like actually implementing that help has changed my life infinitely. Not that that was like specifically like advice somebody gave me, but it was like at one point, like maybe a year and a half ago, someone's like, you need like help. You need help. I was like, I do need help. Like, if you're going to continue to continue to want to put out at the output that you are like. Was that your husband who said that? No, I don't know who it was. It was somebody it was, very it was, smart. It was so many and I'll remember, people. And I'll cherish the conversation forever, <laughs> <laughs> obviously. Well, fittingly, um, isn't that our job here today is to offer that same kind of help? Yeah, and we are. And it's so fun and so exciting. And I, I, I actually didn't look at what the callers were saying. So I, I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to do our best. Yeah, we're going to find out. That's all I can guarantee. I mean, I'll do my best. Okay, so, Sam, I think it's time to take our first caller which you you really led us to drink that water and i'm i'm gonna reinforce that but um let's take our first caller let's do it hello welcome to solicited advice how can we help you hi guys how are you we're good how are you i'm great um nice to meet you both what's your name my name is Catherine, and i would love to tell you a little bit more about my future wedding and Allison I know you just got married oh my god my favorite topic yes (laughs) um yeah so next November November 1st 2024 is our wedding it's a Friday um and we picked the date because 111 is lucky for us it's the number of our apartment um what we weren't thinking when we signed (laughs) the venue was that it's the Friday before the presidential election. Mm. Um, and my family, like many families, um, is very divided by politics and the political landscape. And, um, I feel really nervous about the wedding and wedding adjacent events (laughs) and any of the political topics that might come up. Um, I, feel like a lot of politics wasn't discussed in family dynamics until 2016 when people really showed their true colors and now anything's game and I just don't Mm -hmm. I'm worried about something some conflict happening at the wedding and then I'm worried about let's say we get married conflict free and then Tuesday happens and it's terrible news and like that's a bummer <laughs> to start yeah. married life. So um, that's where I'm at. Okay. Well, bad news. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, let's let's pretend. Let's let's glass half full it. But that could still be bad news for someone in your family, I guess. Um, my question is: Is like, is it like a Romeo and Juliet situation? Is it like your family belongs to one side and his family belongs to another, and you're afraid of them being in the same room with each other? Yeah, good question. So, no, because he's British. Oh, <laughs> um, nice. So, and his family is Australian. Um, 
South African and English. Mm-hmm. So it's mostly my side. Um, they, it's like within my family dynamics. I have uh, family members that are very close to me that aren't speaking to each other right now over politics. And one of them is getting married this month and didn't invite the other one to the wedding over this, mm-hmm. over politics. Like in their, their falling out started in 2016 after... Um, one family member found out that the other one voted for Trump. Mm -hmm. So now I'm bringing them all together um, for these wedding adjacent events and the wedding. And um, also like, don't want his family to judge us either. You know, like they're super open and not judgmental, but like that's, that's like a risk that any person runs like politics aside. And like, I'll just address that question first. But like, I had a lot of the same anxieties of like, it's the first time a lot of people are even meeting and you're like, what are they going to think of me? And everyone's like, nobody cares. And no one's going to look at your mom and be like, oh, now I think less of Allison because it's clear that this person is like not behaving well. And that's really tough to digest, but I think it is true, especially if his family loves him and his family loves you. Like you should take solace in that. I think the other part of the question is really tricky. Uh, Can I ask a question? Is that allowed in this? Is that is that part of oh, the yeah. show? Oh yeah, get okay. in there, Sam. Uh, so okay, one, they're English and Australian, so they have a view of Americans already that that is so going to predate this. So I, I think you're going to be okay on that front. <laughs> but I have I have a question: the the relatives that haven't been speaking to each other, do they both mm-hmm. know that they've been invited to your mm-hmm. wedding, and do they both know that they've both said yes to coming? Like, are they yes. aware of the conditions that they've signed up for? Yeah. Yep. And there have been other occasions recently where they've been in the same room. Um, and how did that And go? it's been okay. But I just worry as the political climate amps up, you know, debates and <clears throat> all sorts of media um, that there's going to be more and more tension. I would yeah. say that it it sort of doesn't matter when the wedding is. I think that it's like you could use as like it's the Friday before the election as like tensions might be running higher, but it sounds like if the wedding was tomorrow, tensions would still be running pretty high. And if you had the wedding two months after the election, tensions would still be running pretty high. So I think it's mm. like a long-term issue that is going to have to be addressed. I will also say that like if your wedding is any, how many people are you, is it like a big wedding or... We're going to have like a little less than a hundred. So not huge. Okay. But I still, I, that's still more than you think. And the beauty of the wedding is that it's your wedding. It's not their wedding. And if somebody throws a fit, they're going to look like an asshole, not you. Mm -hmm. And if people can't be adults at your wedding, that's on them, not you. And hopefully there's enough people there that you're really excited to be around that are giving you like a lot of positive energy that you can like choose to physically surround yourself with. Um, Weddings are so weird. I like, I, it's, it's also like, I remember having conversations with friends being like, oh, I'm stressed out about this, uh, inviting this person, this person. They're like, you don't have to invite anyone. Mm. It's like, oh, you're right. <laughs> and that might be a conversation that you can have with your future husband of like, here are my anxieties. Like, what are your thoughts? Like, how, does this feel important to you? Um, but I think being really transparent and telling everybody who's invited and saying like, hey, every, here's everybody who's invited. I, mm-hmm. It would mean a lot to me if you all came. Um, mm-hmm. I also like know that there's been tension in the past, and I'm really hoping that we can like not focus on that and focus on like me and my wedding for the day. Mm. Like, I know yeah. that that sounds like a little direct and weird, maybe, but I don't know. I don't think it is. I think like it, they are divided, and they are going to be even more divided November first. There's no question. Like this is tough timing, but Allison's right. It would be hard August first. It would be hard any time from now till election day but they're here for you and i think if you go to them and say look we're here to do this like i only get one chance at this and i've invited you here to celebrate this love and the start of it if that seems like if if that if it seems like you're incapable of celebrating that because of this election because you feel like you're going to get into an argument then yeah maybe they should consider not coming because I think it's not fair to you and it's not fair to the rest of the people there. 
but I have a feeling they're going to show up for you and hopefully their love for you and the start of your new life supersedes their political divisions. You would hope. Something that I was torn about was like, do I proactively address this in a funny way? And so I'm, I'm in fundraising for a cancer hospital. And I was like, do I put a QR code at the tables? And it's like, if anyone talks about politics, they need to make a donation to the, the hospital. <laughs> That's actually really funny. And I would totally do that. <laughs> what's the age of, what's the age range here? Um, oh, let's say 20 to the oldest person will be 80. But the people that are divided, are they like in their 50s? Oh, um, 30 and oh. 60. What? Wow. Really taking a slice out of the heart of America. Well, let me just, 60. I, I can guess which one is Republican and which one is Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> Where, yeah, I have a lot of other questions, but I feel like they're not actually relevant to your question. Um, I think it's, do you think that anyone has a sense of humor about it? No, <laughs> like not the people that are going to cause the problem. They take themselves so seriously. Do you have to invite them? Views. Hmm. Yeah, they're like immediate, immediate family. Hmm. I. What about the, instead of the QR code, on the specific tables that those folks are sitting at i assume you're not <laughs> seating yeah, them next you can to each sit other them separately what if you put in the middle of the table like a politics jar that way it's like you don't have to qr code it it's right there mm. if you say anything because what if people donate. don't bring cash to a wedding i don't i don't have cash at a wedding you know what it's not you're not really there to collect money you're really just there to deter them from doing this but i don't know if you're gonna yeah, be able to if they're gonna them. act like children we gotta treat them like children that's kind of what i'm thinking shit yeah. in a swear jar you know what i mean the swear yeah. jar that's what i'm thinking it's a it's a trump but biden it, kind of jar. Is like is that inviting the conversation like if we just ignore it do i have a better opportunity of nothing happening well that's why i think honestly doing it at the beginning sending an email it's kind of like when people started having weddings again and like, hey, we're having a wedding, it would mean a lot to us if you all got tested for COVID before you joined our gather, our, our celebration. Mm. Thank you so much. So yeah. like nobody had to address it like on site and they also felt like they did their due diligence to like draw attention to something that was important to them. Mm -hmm. And I think similarly for this, it's like, hey, we know this is coming, like great, but we are also getting married and this is really important and this is why we chose the state and we hope that you come with like leave the bullshit at home basically like if you'd like to talk to people about their politics like please take it elsewhere this is our wedding i my i would say I don't that's, know. So, that's so aggressive that's like i think you want me to write the note that's what too, i would say i mean it's that's too my early. personality too so well no but Catherine, i just feel like they know that each other is coming right i feel yes. like and how close are you to the two of them really close to both of them but they both talk they are not speaking so they speak about each other to me. Is it just right. two specific people? Are we talking like groups of people? There are two specific people who are fighting, but then they both have like teams, if that makes they're sense. They're surrogates. Yeah, they're <laughs> surrogates. Yeah, this is brutal. I'm sure also very, very common. I feel very lucky that I have never... I, whenever somebody starts talking about politics, like in my family, like fortunately we mostly agree, but at the same time, like I just have to like shut it down and I like close my eyes and I leave the space mentally, mm. which kind of is like having a wedding. Like you, you really can just like excuse yourself in the situation. I wouldn't concern yourself too much with the time that anybody else is having. I would really try to protect yourself and focus on the time that you want to have. And by sitting these people at two separate tables on either end of the room, assuming it's a seated dinner situation is going to do you a lot of favors. It's going to help you a lot. And if like these people find each other, great. If they don't, that's also fine. But, like, I don't think that you would expect any sort of, like, physical altercation during this, no. do you? No. Yeah, okay. As long as, like, people are safe physically. Yeah. You know? I think, like, weddings tend to kind of override other bullshit. In, in my hopes and dreams, they do. I actually don't know that to be true. I would just call them both the week before. I actually don't think you need to do this now. Let's see how it plays out. He's been indicted at least four times there's probably three more coming <laughs> i would just wait till the week before and call them and go hey i know what's happening i know what's going on please like you know keep this in mind and just be respectful 
But I feel like now it's so early. Oh yeah, don't deal with it now. Yeah, definitely I just feel don't like deal with the it. The week now. before, they'll they'll be more like, oh, they've already they've started packing their bags and they've like it's of mind that they're going to this thing. Are and they I mean, traveling for the wedding? Not far. Okay. Okay. Well, I do you think that you'd have like more luck with one person than the other? I feel like in the like there's been times like on a much different scale, but like I've invited people to a party that I'm like, oh fuck, like these people hate each other. Or like I, you know, I, it totally escaped my mind, but these people used to date and like this person does not vibe with this person's new person, whatever. Like I've put people in a room together that I immediately regret upon invitation. And it's always easier instead of to approach both parties to like hone in on the one person that you can kind of level with mm -hmm. and be like, hey, can you do me a favor or heads up or I'm sorry or whatever and kind of like figure out the most rational, reasonable person of the two parties is and like angle them for like getting you through it. You know what yeah, I mean? I love that idea. Obviously, it's not the Trump supporter. No. <laughs> Shocking. Um yeah, so I think just being like, hey, I know this is infuriating and like I just really don't want it to come up. I know that you can't control if it does come up on somebody else's end, but if you can control it on your end, it would really mean a lot to me. It would be the best wedding gift you could give me. Yeah. Pull the wedding and card all day, all day. That person would respect that. I think that the other person in the party would could rise to the occasion for that. Yeah. And hopefully like if they're not in the same table and they're not forced to be in conversation like it'll be fine yeah and all the attention will be on you and like people will be taking photos like it'll be such a thing and again alcohol could help or could not help that was sam's advice <laughs> i'm just kidding well, you gave other good advice that wasn't it no my one advice my one sole piece of advice is to just let them drink um yeah i don't know <laughs> it, it, it could go either way on that some people are happy drunks some are less also, you mentioned this, uh, like, on Tuesday is the election. And you're like, this is not an auspicious way to start, you know, like, being married. Yeah. I actually think it's maybe the best, because are you going on a honeymoon right then? We're going to do a little mini moon. I a think. mini moon. So, just well, a you'll... weekend away. Okay. Well, you'll be away, yeah, hopefully, that. from that. And it's, yeah. like, that's, like, maybe the best time. To be disconnected from, you know, obviously, uh, obviously we support maybe mail-in ballots, voting early. Oh yeah, voting early. We want to we want to encourage that. You here, should right, encourage Allison? everyone to go into your wedding to vote early. Be like, you don't want to take this into the weekend. <laughs> Get it out of the way. Vote early. That's a great idea, actually. That's like a funny way to address it. Yeah, and then yeah, like vote early and then leave that shit at home and do not bring yeah. that to my wedding. I like, actually th feel like that's the that's the, the wow, way. Wow, we got there. <laughs> Vote early. Vote, voting early solves so many problems. <laughs> wow, my it, one flippant it, bit turned into I know. Be, turned into it's one so real piece of advice. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love that actually. I can't wait to vote early. I love voting early. God, do I feel smug? I'm like, oh me, oh I voted weeks ago. Catherine, we hope that between potentially sending an email, voting early, alcohol, and being direct, there's an answer somewhere in there, and that this was helpful. Yeah, it definitely was. It was good to talk through it. And I feel like I thought of, we talked through things that I didn't consider. So that was really helpful. Okay, good. Well, we'll Best be luck, thinking Catherine. of you on November 1st, 2024. Thank you. This episode of Solicited Advice is presented by Maker's Mark. If you're a fan of my YouTube series, Home Movies, you probably know that we took a little field trip to the Maker's Mark Distillery in Loretto, Kentucky earlier this year, where we honestly just learned so much. Something that really inspired me was the story about how Maker's Mark was originally created by the extremely impressive duo, Bill and Margie Samuels. Bill had a perfectly fine bourbon recipe that was passed down to him, family to family, but Bill, a man after my own heart, decided that perfectly fine would simply not do. So he burned that 170-year-old recipe, literally, in pursuit of a newer, better version. And that version is still the Maker's Mark we know and love today, made with that classic soft winter wheat to achieve that smooth finish. And I can relate. When I'm creating recipes, my Virgo placement would honestly never settle for something that's perfectly fine. I only settle for perfection, even if that means burning it. Not literally, but you get it. It's safe to say that Bill and Margie nailed the perfect recipe with Maker's Mark, designed to stand the test of time. So next time you're out, grab a bottle of Maker's Mark and cheers to them. Cheers to yourself. 
and cheers to burning things in the pursuit of something better. Cheers. Maker's Mark makes their bourbon carefully, so please enjoy it that way. Maker's Mark Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 45% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2023, Maker's Mark Distillery Incorporated, Loretto, Kentucky. What did you... That's so, so tough. So that was, so I that was tough. Good that's Lord. Tough. I mean, my real answer, which I mean, I sort of got at is like, don't invite them. But, but I that, think wasn't with weddings, just, that wasn't an option. That wasn't an option. I know. I know. Weddings are often... People always describe weddings as like, it's really for everyone. Like, it's really for your grandmother. It's really for, it doesn't, it feels like it's a celebration for you, but then yours actually did look like a celebration online from, from what I it saw. It was. It was a really fun party. And that's what we wanted because of that anxiety for weddings. Yeah. Where you're like, I'm doing, I have a friend who had a 300 person wedding mm-hmm. and I would say like 180 of those people, she had no idea who they were. She's wow. like literally had never met them. That's but incredible. I also think it's like who's helping you pay for things. Like if your parents are like, we're going to pay for your wedding, then they get to invite their friends or they, you have to invite like Mima or whatever. But mm-hmm. like we paid for everything ourselves. We're like, yours we, was sponsored by is, cookbook, right? Yeah. My, I was sponsored by Maker's Mark. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, yeah. Ours was sponsored by <laughs> Sweet Enough in stores everywhere. <laughs> yeah. We work, we work for our wedding really hard. And um, part of that is, um, why I'm so happy to be partnering with Maker's Mark. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. No, but seriously, I I felt like no one got to tell me who could come and who couldn't come and who, how we spent our time and how we spent our money because we I did. feel like generally people don't get to tell you how to be or what to do. You, you mean me personally? Yeah, yeah, you personally. Yeah, that's true. You're that's doing true. your thing. I try. I have boundaries. Really? I don't love it. I don't love being told. No, I don't love being told what to do. But it, it's interesting because... As much as I hate being told what to do, like socially, I've, I've like, as I've gotten older, I've like really gravitated towards like, um, professionally. Mm -hmm. I'm like, someone just tell me what to do. (laughs) Someone like give me the best advice. Someone tell me what to do. Like I, I'm a, I'm an open book at this point, but, but yeah, it's, I don't know. I'm in a meta, I'm in like a molting phase right now. Metamorphosis. She was definitely looking to us for real help uh, on an issue that's like tough to give advice on. I know. Because and that's uh, what's tough about these questions is sometimes you're like, Oh, and sometimes they're like very casual and sweet and funny. And sometimes you're like, Oh my God, I really don't want to. It's like when somebody says like, is sixth Avenue this way or this way? And I point them in the wrong direction every time <laughs> I've been in New York for 13 years. I don't know where anything is, <laughs> but people think I look like I live in New York and that's enough. You do live in New York. I know, but I'm saying I look like I do, which is a huge compliment. Okay, amazing. So let's uh, let's move on to our next caller. Hi, should I go ahead and introduce Hi. myself here? Yeah, that would be amazing. Who who are we speaking <laughs> with? How can we help you? Oh my gosh, how can you both help me? Um, my name's Jenny, and hi Jenny, welcome. Yeah, thank you so much. Happy to be getting some solicited advice. Um, yeah, where are you calling from? I'm actually calling from my hotel room in West Hollywood, but I, I, um, my issue stems in Brooklyn, and that's where I live. Ah, okay. Well, a little West Coast, East Coast, Sam and I can both be of service then. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I've been living in the same wonderful building for quite a few years now in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. and I feel like there's always living in New York, I'm sure probably in LA too, in many areas, you have this conundrum where it checks all the boxes except one, um, one Mm. or two. And that being said, I love everything about where I am, the most of the neighbors, you know, location, all of those boxes are checked, but there is this annual confrontation issue I have with my downstairs neighbor and what happens is come winter every year, we have central ace, uh, central heat. It's an old building. Um, and because of that, it is just blasting like 80 degree temperatures on that, um, on the thermostat every single year. And given she is a bit of an older resident, I think she's actually been living in this same building since the nineties. So, truly like she's seen the neighborhood evolve and many people Mm. come and go um she has that thermostat located like squarely 
next to her door. Literally, she could probably, like, exit her door, like, put an arm out and change that thermostat to whatever. But it's in the common area. It's, it's in the common in area. Okay. Yeah. And it's for the entire, like, you know, four-story building. Uh, my roommate and I, we happen to live at the top of that building. And given heat rises, uh, she loves things a little toasty. Um, she cranks it up to 80 every night. And it is just, like, a sauna where we are. I mean, it's... It's almost oh, unbearable, brutal. and yeah. Um, given that the New York winters also last like what feels to be nine months or so, uh, it is like just almost a nonstop state all year of of sweating, of sweating, of feeling like I'm I'm just dying at night. Yeah, you're not in control, and you're sweating. Those are like two very bad things to feel in your home. Horrible, uh, and Do you- yeah, yeah. Is this, is this like a person, like you've approached this person before. You've been like, Hey, is it cool if we keep it at a da da da? Like you've been, you've tried many approaches, I'm assuming. So that's the thing. Uh, I've oh. ran into her. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was waiting for some sort of, oh, uh, I have run into her many I'm here times. For the O's. Yeah. <laughs> I've run into her many, many times. I'm always so friendly. It is like, a nice hi how are you doing so good to see you and then we're both just moving on with our days uh mm. i've never gathered the courage to actually be like hey oh. i i know you are the one doing this because i do check every time i go up the stairs and the moment i turn it down i hear you then exit i hear you turn off your tv to listen and i hear you then come out only to then put it on 80 again how long you been living there yeah i've been there almost four years oh my god (laughs) four years of sweating (laughs) but you've never asked her directly you've never been like hey can you not never in a nicer way obviously okay i've never asked her i've been nothing but friendly does she live alone she lives alone she is, is she like 60 plus 60 plus and again like she's a, she's a woman who's very set in her ways she's like always up at 5 a.m you she's at her same routine like power walking around the park um she's lived there since the 90s like this she has things the way she likes them some people on this podcast were born in the 90s <laughs> yeah who what probably you two um okay are so you kidding i <laughs> What if you bought her a space heater and you knocked on the door and you paired it with like a little treat, perhaps some cookies, a little tea cake, and you said, hey, maybe I know something from sweet coming. enough? Yeah, maybe in stores now. <laughs> um, maybe, yeah. And, and say, hey, I know winter is coming. Um, I know it gets colder what is this game on the, the lower floor. <laughs> Should I dress up and like, cosplay down. while I'm at it? Saying yeah, put a wolf <laughs> pelt on. I don't know. Um, and just be like, <laughs> and just be like, I know that it's colder down on the lower floors. I, it is so hot in our apartment every winter. We were hoping to keep the thermostat at a, to, at a 72, like pick a number. 75 <laughs> feels still too hot for me personally. Um, but maybe there's a compromise, like windows open 75, like, I don't know. But can we compromise? Can we set it at this temperature? I got you this space heater because I don't want you to be cold. Let me know if that's an issue. Okay. Can I can I chime in here? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so, one, she's over 60. She knows that heat rises. So, I don't think we need to do, like, a little science lesson for her. Mm-mm. The, the problem is... Si- I mean, it's yeah, like okay. the wrong age group. The, Jenny, the first thing you have to do is ask her. You have to start with that. You don't need a space heater. You don't need to give her a sweater. You need to just ask her kindly, as kind as you've been for four years. You have four years of kindness on your side. I think you got to start in the negotiation process just asking before you move the space heater, which is really like an olive branch. That's how you that's when you're deep in negotiations. You offer that. But I think just asking like, hey, you know. I actually would not mention that it's bothered you for four years. I would just say it, it is, um, it's been especially unpleasant for you this winter. 
Is it something you could, you know, can we work it down to like 76, 77? Is it possible? You know, I think you just have to ask. But I, I can see like you're a very kind person who hasn't asked in four years, which is unbelievable. <laughs> like you should get an award <laughs> for yeah. peacekeeping. I agree. But you need to start with like a genuine ask. And then you can go to like the gift idea from Allison, which is good. But I think that's too early. Like it's too early for that. I, You're right. Yeah. That what you can't go from I've never confronted this person to gifting them a space <laughs> <laughs> with a batch of cookies <laughs> in a wolf pelt. Like that's not, you're right. Uh, I'm like, I know, become a different person overnight. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're not hearing me. I don't do confrontation. <laughs> um, but I do think that like using this as what I'm assuming is a part of a larger issue <laughs> in your life to saying like, okay, I'm taking my issues with confrontation that maybe trickle their way into work, friendship, relationship, whatever. And like sort of, uh, guinea pigging it on my neighbor like I'm going to learn how to confront I'm going to learn how to ask for what I need I'm going to learn how to you know things won't change unless I mm -hmm. ask for them to change you know type of mentality then that could be like a really positive effect on the rest of your life so don't just think about it being less hot and sweaty in the winter think about it as changing your life <laughs> is, the is, she, is she curmudgeonly is she curmudgeonly She's a tad curmudgeon. Uh, she is very much Which means so. she definitely is, because you're very nice. <laughs> yeah. She, she knows what's happening with everyone. Um, she's definitely in cahoots with the inner workings of each neighbor. Uh, so I would not doubt that she knows I'm the one who's been changing it, and she herself is also not. She's actually our next caller. She's, <laughs> ask, she's asking about you. Let's bring her in, please. <laughs> yeah. Jenny uh, Mason. Got, uh, She's in West Hollywood at the... I don't know why she sounds like this. Um, do, but the are, thing does is, it bother other neighbors? Does it bother other neighbors, the heat? It does. I've, I've conversed with other neighbors. I don't think to the same extreme because they're not at the very top of the building. But I think, too, just the idea of knocking on her door and being like, Hi, can I just talk to you about this? Yeah. How do I even muster the courage to do that? It's so awful. It is no, truly, it is the worst because it's also like neighbors are so into, like you share a building. There's so much intimacy and like you honestly like don't want to know. Like I, I, I understand I've had a really tough time talking to my neighbors in the past, but you do just kind of have to like, I, I had to knock on the door of each person in my building one time to like ask them permission for something. And it was, it was to mortifying. bake after 2 a.m. Yeah. It yeah. Was, crazy yeah, I gotta get those cottage cheesecakes in the <laughs> oven those, they're not gonna recipe test themselves um, I do apologize for the smell of delicious baked goods 24 7 that you didn't offer them which is really not cool <laughs> no, I did I did I did and then I didn't deliver because I didn't actually have any leftovers anyway um, but it is mortifying but I do think that like it's a good lesson in order to just be like what's the worst that can happen so the way that whenever I'm th feeling anxious about doing something or I'm like scared, if I've never, if I've never done it, I don't know how it's going to go. I really do allow myself to think about the worst case scenario, like the furthest possible conclusion of, of the worst this could possibly play out. So like working through this, what is the worst that could happen? She says no and like slams the door in your face. And then every time you see her, it's like an awkward interaction. She jacks it up to 85. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. She's like, let's Rude. make it a slow death up there. But if she's also <laughs> that old, she probably doesn't give a fuck. And she's probably like, no. And like, that's it. If I think she you were like 28, I'd be like, oh, it's going to be like a movie. And like, you guys are going to like slowly try to like ruin each other's lives. But she's probably like, no. And then just like, won't. Like, she probably can't be bothered. My other piece of recommendation, if that doesn't work, if you're like more logistical, less with the confrontation. Is this something that you could involve your landlord in and just say like, Hey, do you think we could have like a building policy where the heat doesn't go above this temperature for the sake of tenants on all floors? I, I would say she's been there since the nineties. I think you don't <laughs> want to get into like a change in policy for someone that's been there for three decades. Like I think you, you want to start, 
I think wake that's up so at funny. five. In my head, I was like the nineties. I was like, that's not really that long. And then I was like, oh, that's almost. It's <laughs> thirty years. Actually, is a quite yeah. long time. You know, why don't you wake up at five thirty in the morning and go on a power walk with her? <laughs> you catch her out <laughs> at the park, and you go, hey, you know how it's cool outside right now? That's what I want in my apartment. <laughs> yeah, this happened to me in in my last apartment. The people, it was like September twenty eighth, and it was like just like immediate inferno like they're like well fall is here you know and wasted no time because they were in the basement and the basement is cold and the top floor is boiling and that's where I was and so I did have to actually like ask them and then when they didn't I literally just kept my windows open and I was like okay and but if I not- owned the bill if I like own if this was like a co-op situation you have a bigger problem on your hands if this is also the biggest issue I think it's a good personal exercise to work on confrontations and mm-hmm. maybe using this as a as a way in. But ultimately, logistically, like you might be living in like a hot apartment with the windows open in the winter sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And something I failed to mention, too, is <clears throat> for some reason, the position of this building airflow is just like horrendous in my room, even with the window open in winter there there's not like even a, a slight breeze um mm. so it's quite stifling <laughs> but yeah. it sounds like confrontation is just something you have you've historically not enjoyed is that is that right yes yeah it you, it makes me very uncomfortable what about it makes you uncomfortable i think the idea of what's going to happen next Uh, like the unknown Mm -hmm. and I think I have a tendency to think of the worst thing that could happen um so be that with the roommate maybe it's a horrible living situation from there on out uh or they Mm -hmm. decide to move out um even a family member like if they're bothering me um maybe it's going to be some sort of really angry situation um uh, literally with every single relationship I feel like it's really easy to catastrophize, like what the worst could be. Yeah. And, and you accommodate in all of those too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As a, as a very confrontational person, I really can't relate, but as like a person who is You're friends with a lot of, no- <laughs> um, but people who I'm friends with a lot of people who aren't, and we've taught each other a lot about the merits of of not always confronting and also like how to confront but also like why i've i've come to understand and have a lot more sympathy sympathy for the people who who don't but i will say that like when you stop thinking of it as conflict or aggression or confrontation in the pejorative and you start thinking of it as like asking for what you want and like being clear and being honest and being truthful and being sort of Uh, open, then I think you can kind of, in a case-by-case basis, start to rationalize why it might be beneficial. And I think if we think of like, well, I don't want to be confrontational because I don't want to start a fight. People are going to get angry. It's going to be awful. You go down a bad path. But if you're like, well, I do want to ask for what I want because how will this person ever fix what I need if I don't tell them? And Mm -hmm. then otherwise you build up resentment and then that becomes like a whole other issue. And now you really resent your neighbor and she just... (laughs) She has no idea. No, I was about to say the resentment, it's already there. It's, it's been brewing, given this is a, For four a years. multi-year thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, it, so. I mean, you have to ask yourself, is it, are you more willing to be uncomfortable for four minutes or like four months? Nice. And, and if you're like, you know, I'd rather just endure the four months, then... I guess you say nothing, but my guess is like four minutes is what it will take. Maybe not even, maybe not even. She'll also get over it. Like, like, like I said, her age, she's probably like never going to think about it again. (laughs) Could you go with your roommate also? I probably could. Uh, She thinks it's crazy that no. Okay. Oh no. No, But they live there together. (laughs) Yeah. But then, then it feels like, then it feels like it's been preconceived and you're ganging up on her. And she then she feels on the back. She's on her back foot going like, I've done something wrong. And now two people are saying it. No one wants to get bad news or be asked to change something bad from like news. a group of people. This is why people don't like interventions. Terrible news. Either. Winter is coming. You just know you don't want that. Right. One person. Okay. Right. I think. Bad idea. 
Bad advice. Okay. No, it's, it's we it's have our first bad advice <laughs> on the show. It's been flawless advice since I just did the bad advice, so we're good. I, Was that the original title good. of this podcast? Bad advice. <laughs> no, but it should be. If the, if things go poorly, we can just have Brit mock up a new logo. <laughs> and it's fine. <laughs> Do we get follow ups um, on this show? Like months later, can Jenny? Does Jenny call in? So I actually had to move out. Uh, <laughs> No. Wait, what? No, no, no. That can be my uh, follow-up message. <laughs> Wait, you're moving out? No, no, no. But um, oh, that's a joke. Post confrontation. <laughs> did you? By the okay. way, did you? I was like, did you, what? <laughs> Wait, did you fly to Los Angeles to avoid confronting her? Like, did you rent a room in West Hollywood because you so badly didn't want to talk to her? Well, yes, sound does really travel in our apartment, and I do hear a lot of her conversations, but that's not the reason why I um, travel to LA. No, um, that I think we'd be having a much larger issue on our hands. (laughs) Yeah, that would be really. Well, I wish you luck. Well, Jenny, we hope that we helped you, and thank you so much for calling in, and we really appreciate you. Yeah, thank you both so much. Great to talk to you. Of course. Bye. Good luck. I honestly was just like, that poor lady is so cold. I felt, mm-hmm. I, all I could think of was my grandma, who's now passed. But, and like, she was like always wearing like four socks and like little booties and like sweats and a robe and like was just so cold. And she wasn't like a small, f- frail person. But I think as you get older, you get colder. <laughs> yes, I think that's And if right. she's on a lower floor. Listen, I'm not like turning against Jenny. I think it's totally reasonable. But I also think like if you're going to ask somebody to be less comfortable, you have to make them comfortable. And hence the space heater suggestion. I think it's a good suggestion. I'm just saying she hasn't just asked. She she, has, right. she, has, she hasn't That's inquired yet. So it's like maybe start yeah. there. Maybe yeah. it goes That's to actually 76, that... 77. It could be okay. Yeah. I learned that in therapy actually, it was, which is like – the asking thing you gotta ask you're like complaining about something or like a work situation or a friendship situation it's like well have you ever thought about just like telling them and asking Mm. and most of the time i'm like well no why would you do that that's crazy but i think that (laughs) that feels insane that that paralyzed like she very clearly is like paralyzed a little bit and and that just confrontation is so scary to some people that um i like i can i I feel bad because i can tell like four years of literally brewing up there. Like it's just, it's bad. <laughs> in a s- literal sauna. It's bad. I, I kind of wanted to know like where she lived so I could like get a sense if this was like, if you, like where, I don't well, know. You want to go to Brooklyn and, and confront her together? Detective yeah. work. Yeah. I was like, can I help in person? <laughs> like what if we took this podcast to the real life, this the is real the, world? That's the problem is like you and I are too similar because we're both combative people that have no problem. You're combative? My mom's a lawyer. I mean, I I, I, I love confrontation. Your mom's a, my mom's a court reporter. That doesn't mean I I'm like we, good we at agreed typing. Oh, come on. It, <laughs> it, I, no, I'm just saying. I have like, no problem asking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is my favorite part of the show. This is sort of where the show came from. Uh, Chef's Kiss Hotline. This was like a way for me to answer questions, mostly cooking based, but like now have spread to other things but um if you are listening and you have a question that can be answered on this very fun and important segment of the show please call us at 856-502-4816 or go to allisoneroman.com slash podcast um and know that phone number doesn't spell anything it's just a bunch of numbers so remember it Hey, Allison. Uh, Bobby Westside on the line here calling from New York, New York. The city's so nice they named it twice. Just wanted to know your thoughts on texting etiquette. How, if, if someone doesn't text me back for several days, they might as well not text me at all. I'm expecting, I give it a 24-hour leniency. I'm curious your thoughts uh, as the mouthpiece of the people because maybe I'm being a little crazy. I'm not sure, but I can't wait to hear the answer. Thank you. Love you. Goodbye. So, so that's about you, right? It, it kind of is, but it's not really. Because okay. he, uh, that was actually a question. But I was like, we need to keep that in because I have some thoughts. But I do think we need to, I just want to address real quick, New York, New York, the city's so nice they named it twice. That's 
what my husband put on our napkins for our wedding. So this so person attended your wedding. Of course. Yeah. Bobby's a part of the family now. Um, okay. So texting back, I have so many thoughts on this. Mm. I, I don't want to take up too much room because I do want to hear your thoughts too, but we need to condition ourselves to not be on call to every single person in our life. Mm-hmm. And there are tiers of text. Is it a question? Mm-hmm. Is it a friend? Is it a family member? Is it a work related text? How well do you know this person? What's the urgency? Like there are so many factors in determining. I have some people in my life. Jen's husband, Eric is one of them. Would n- would rather do. Oh God, I don't know. Name an activity, like literally anything in the world before he would text me back. That man loves me. Like he's my brother. Like I've known him for 15 years. I would die for him. I love him. He feels the same about me. He's just never going to text me back. It's not because of a way he feels. There are some people that I just don't expect to text back from. And that's Mm -hmm. okay. It's the relationship. There are some people when you're like, hey, do you want to do dinner on Friday? And you don't hear back from them. That's annoying. Yes. I think if it's it's a question around something that could happen in the next 72 hours... If they don't text you back, then, like, don't ask them to hang out again, I would say. Like, I, I think if it's a question about something that's that could happen, you should expect a response within the day. But generally, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a quick texter at all. Like, I'm definitely a f- 24 to 72 hour, especially if I'm being asked for something, I will take mm. three to four well, days. Well, if I'm being asked for something and it's work-related, you better send that email. You you had better just open up that Gmail app. I do not want to text about it. It's not appropriate. Mm-hmm. Unless it's like, we're, I'm on like several like work group chats where it's like, yeah. that's where we do our best work. But if, it, if we're not close, I don't know you very well, and you're texting me about something work related, I've had two people in the last month text me who I don't speak to. Like maybe once every two to three years I hear from mm-hmm. or see and texted me. And one of the people was like, are you mad at me? And I was like, because I didn't text back with, it was like, I counted it. It was like 17 hours. Yeah. And I was like, what? No, I, I barely know you. Like you're asking a favor of you. Like wanted my time. Like I, it was crazy. Some people anyway, like texting. I love texting. You do. Okay. I'm a maniac. I text on my computer. I text on my phone. I'm, I'm constantly in conversation. It's, I'm a bit of a wordsmith, Sam. I, writing is my paintbrush, and I, it's how I communicate. It's how I see the world. Really? And I could spend all day talking to people. I thought a spatula was your paintbrush. Well, I have many tools. Really? A You're painter mul- has multifaceted. many paintbrushes, uh, whatever. Yeah. Um, Words weren't great right but yeah, there. but They weren't good. They were, I'm, that's as I'm saying. I'm better at typing. <laughs> if we had been texting, I would have been sharper We did and try quicker. to text this whole episode to each other but we just we can figure it out i, I know look, that would have been that's like a different version of the podcast it's like that's a chat, more of a chat gpt website. version yeah. yeah i don't i don't i don't know it sounds like bobby westside wants you to respond more promptly to his text that's what i gathered yeah that's correct and okay. i will i'll text him back more and better so i i don't i guess the etiquette is like if you can't, I have a friend who straight up said to me, like, I don't like texting. It, it makes me uncomfortable. It's not how I best communicate. I really prefer phone calls. So if like you want to catch up, cause I was like not feeling close to her. And I was like, well, I'm not feeling close to her cause we never text. Like we never check in with each other. And I have so many friends who I know are too busy to get on the phone. So we text all the time. And she was just like, I don't text. I don't like it. I'm like, okay, it's not personal. Then I don't expect that from you anymore. I think you have to negotiate the relationship it's different for every person so yeah set your expectations i would say more the the advice is like start with yourself like don't take it personally Mm -hmm. and like make the plans that you have to make and move on if somebody's non-responsive exactly hi allison this is sydney from miami florida uh i've been a huge fan of yours for the past three or four years now um and i wanted to know what would you say is a good go-to dish for a first cooking date so not like a first date but someone you've been seeing for not too too long and you want to cook for them um what's a show-stopping yet something that doesn't say i spent all afternoon on this 
I'm laid back, fun, and casual, but also I have incredible cooking talent. So let me know. Also, please uh, bring a book tour here to Miami. Would love to see you. Thanks so much. Bye. Wow. Actually, Sa- Sam I, waving emphatically would love to take this one. I have the answer because it's one of your recipes. Oh, my God. Tell me. Carbonara. Really? It's a couple eggs. You, you put the pancetta in there. It, it's easy. And then you move it from the from the pot to the pancetta, uh, the oil from there. And then you move it into the – it's a little bit of, like, moving stuff around, but – I mean, that's like that scene in Harper. Like, come on, you, you put you whip that do you up then quickly. Bring, do you then bring that up? D- did you do this? Are you speaking from experience? Absolutely. <laughs> is this like a is this like a thing? Is this like a bit that you do, or is this like I don't I don't do it, bits. You did it once and it worked. I don't do bits. I don't do bits. I just I am who I am. Well, the carbonara is just it's not a ton of effort. It can be made very quickly, and it's really good and comforting. What are you serving with it? My love. Oh wow! Okay. I'm just and this is like first date, first cooking date. No, I, 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 I maybe I'll, I'll roast a vegetable or something like that, but not, not yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. I think it's we need like a filling. big peppery side salad. Yeah, it is. But like, come over for dinner. Like, I think that's nice. Like a big skillet of pasta says like I didn't like make like an eight course situation here. I wouldn't do fish. No. Unless you knew that they really liked fish or they only ate fish. Um. Only because that says, like, I don't know what that says. It doesn't say what I would want to say. Yeah. Well, what what, what would you want to say? I'd want to say, uh, I'm going to make us a nice home one day. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I want to say that, like, I like calories. I want to say that, yeah. like, food tastes good and we should eat a lot of it. I want to mm-hmm. say, and, like, I love fish. Don't get me wrong. I think, like, fish says, like, I'm a bit of a foodie. Mm-hmm. No, you don't want that. And like, no, I don't want that. I wouldn't want that. I've had, I have like a few stories of people that have cooked for me on first dates or not like first dates, but like first cooking dates. And it really told me everything I needed to know about them. That is so, that, that, that is like someone going on a date with Jordan and being like, let's play a game of pick up basketball. <laughs> Why would they do that? That is so dumb. Well, two of them, two of my memories are like definitely before I was like, anyone knew who Alison Roman was like oh, okay. maybe some people did but like you know not like today they were, they were like I've I've I got Dozens this recipe from Bon Appetit <laughs> yeah exactly no but it, like it was around that time and I remember being like okay this guy's into food like I'm I can I'll let him cook for me like that I want him to feel comfortable and I was like I was like, I rendered a bunch of duck fat at work today like is that something you're interested in and he was like no I'm good thanks I was like Oh, you're good. Okay. Well, I guess uh see you never. How like, was the food? Fussy. Great. God, great description. You should really yeah. think about doing this work. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so carbonara, I always also say a roast chicken, which mm-hmm. I know is basic, but it is like a thing that you can really linger over. It's like similarly effortless in that like you drizzle it with oil, you season it with salt mm-hmm. and pepper, you can put it in the oven throw some shallots or onions or mushrooms around if you want, but just a chicken and a skillet or on a sheet pan is really nice. Yeah. And like a big salad and like, mm -hmm. that's good. Maybe some like delicious cheese to start. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. That feels like, Oh, this, Oh yeah. Mm. It's just like I roasted a chicken. That feels nice to me. That's good. Carbonara. Carbonara is like second date. I'd say that's like a bit sexier. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, you Rose want, chicken doesn't you want expect them to any be there for contact. some of that. Yeah, you want them to see you in action, whisking, the whole thing. Yeah, that's true. There's no whisking in the carb. Oh, I guess there is whisking. You're right. I should Allison? know. Um, okay, I use your next recipe. caller. Hello, my name is Nicholas. I'm calling from Indianapolis, Indiana. And my question is... Um, I really don't like vinegar. And so my question for you is, what can I do to incorporate vinegar into more of my foods and just make it more palatable or likable for me? Thank you. Bye. I think, I mean, your face says it all, Sam. I think we have the same answer. Don't. Don't. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I think that especially with food when people are like, I feel like I've said this before on the podcast, maybe not, but it's like four days old, so I don't know what I've said. But 
people are always like, I hate anchovies or I think tin fish is disgusting. Like, how do I like it? I'm like, yeah, don't. Like, if I, like, you just don't and don't like it. That's totally okay. And if you don't like vinegar, that's okay. I will say. That's confusing. There are so many types of vinegar that if you're like, oh, I just don't like acidic foods in general, Mm. there's not a vinegar in the world that you're going to care for. Mm. But if you're like, I don't like. Malt. Like, I hate balsamic vinegar. I don't like it at all. I don't want it in my food. I don't want it in my salad. I don't want it near me ever. Mm. I don't like it. But that doesn't mean I don't like vinegar. So certain people who don't like olives, they still find themselves really enjoying like Castelvetrano olives. So I don't love always like saying like throwing the whole food category out, but vinegar is vinegar. Vinegar is acidic. It's tart. It's punchy. It's intense. And if you don't like that flavor, but what I'm guessing is like, I don't know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to say this kindly, but like, or I guess, I don't know, I, I kind of need to talk to this person because I need to know where they're experiencing the vinegar, where they're like, I don't like vinegar. Like, do they not like pickles? Mm, I know. You know? Because I use vinegar as like a seasoning agent. I add it to like beans or like a stew or, you know, a braise to like perk things up a bit to like make them like not so fatty and rich and heavy. But nobody would ever drink that and be like, is there vinegar in this? Like, they would just be like, oh, it's like well-balanced and acidic. I just don't understand why... Nicholas feels like he has to, he has to like vinegar. Like, is someone in his life trying to indoctrinate him? Like, what is going on? Yeah. I don't know. Well, I guess that's the other thing is like, if that's very, I was really centering myself there, wasn't I? I was like, it's me. I'm the problem. (laughs) Um, I'm telling him to use vinegar all the time, but I am. I cook with it often. But um, yeah, I guess just like omit it. But I do think that if you, I would start, if you're cooking for yourself, I would start by using half the amount because it's there for a reason. And if you take it out completely, you might be like, ah, oh, this is missing something. Or use a squeeze of lemon or something. Mm-hmm. But like it does, it's a, it's utility. It's like in the same way you add salt, you add vinegar. Like it, it is making the dish whole well, and the food also, delicious. Also, your taste changes. So like maybe you step away for a couple of years. And you, and you try yeah, come it. back to it. Uh, come back to it. Maybe yeah. maybe you'll vinegar will always be here. It's a very old food. It's not going. It's anywhere. not going anywhere. Hi, Allison. My name is Meg, and I'm calling from Detroit. I was so happy to see that you have this hotline, um, and I'm really hoping you'll consider my question. Um, my husband and I love to entertain, and in our family, we have like the most space to do it. Um, we're both very much into cooking. We have all of your books. We frequently cook your recipes, so thank you so much. Um, his mom is dreadful, and every time we have a family gathering where we're hosting and cooking, she comes early, which I never request, and wants to help cook, and very frequently puts her spin on dishes that we're trying to make a certain way going by the recipe, and she wants to do things her way. Um, And I've been peaceful up until this point, but with the holidays around the corner, she's going to be coming again. And I just wondered if you have any sort of gentle mother-in-law advice on how to, I don't know, dissuade her from thinking she needs to participate at all and not come off as like an ungrateful dick. Um, because I think she wants to help, but also she's very controlling and wants everybody to do things her way. So anyway, just wondered if you've ever encountered anything like this with um, a persistent guest who thinks they know more than you and ends up kind of making the cooking hosting experience unpleasant. Any advice is appreciated. Thank you. Bye-bye. Who would know more than Allison? I mean, I'm fortunate enough to like have started my career at a young age so that like I kind of grew into how people perceive me. Mm -hmm. So like no one's ever tried to assert themselves over me, like in the kitchen for hosting. I do think that in this particular situation, the thing that you should, that she should do is do most things beforehand. (laughs) before she gets there or tell her people are coming over at eight if people are really coming over at seven and then she shows up at seven with everyone else. No, you don't like this idea. 
Wait, no, these were the, both of those, both pieces oh, that... of advice were the exact things I wrote down. Oh, <laughs> wait, you're writing these down? I write down the name of the person in case I want to remember it. I want to. Oh my god! It. Wow, you're so much. I have nothing. I have a lip gloss and an empty mug of tea. You got. Um, okay, so that and I also think saving one thing for her to do, mm-hmm. and being like, oh, I would love your help with X, mm-hmm. and like delegate that thing and make her feel important and special because it's annoying and you don't want her around, but she's not going anywhere at least yeah. for a little bit. And so I think that you should honor that. And be like, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna make this easy for me. And like give her something so that she doesn't try to meddle in anything else. Yep. Uh, yeah, give, give her a delayed, give her a incorrect start time so that she shows up with everyone else. People and do that to me, but the opposite. They'll say like something starts at six if it starts at seven because I'm late. Oh, but really? I'm working on that. Yeah. Did you just start working on it? I mean, like, because we did start this podcast years. 30 minutes late. No, we did not. <laughs> I was kidding. here two minutes late. <laughs> I'm kidding. And I was infirmed. You, <laughs> you can hear it in my voice. I was getting tea to care yeah. for myself. L- l- ask her to, like, is she making any? Why not ask her to make something at home and bring it? Right? Like, is that not yeah. kosher? Okay. I'm then, assuming that because she's not already doing that, that's like not the vibe. She also probably just wants to be like, I'm the mom. I come over early, mm-hmm. you know, and I think where it's like, here's, here's one like tiny little task that's going to like take forever. Like give her eight pounds of string beans and tell her to take the tails off. Mm-hmm. Give her fava beans when those are in seat. Well, niche, <laughs> give her fava beans. She's not going to do that. Um, you won't tell believe her to, the like, advice Allison gave me. <laughs> She, said, she told me to stock seek up on out fava, fava beans. beans. <laughs> Fresh fava beans. She's like, it's October. Um, I think she should take mushrooms and like clean them off with a little paper towel. <laughs> like, oh, you like, just, like, say you're staging. You're staging in like a fancy ass restaurant. They used to make you do the task that took the longest so that you wouldn't get bored, but you wouldn't have to really do anything important. But then they teach you that everything's important, blah, blah, blah. So you basically, they're like, we need you to take. Mm-hmm. all these eggs and we need you to separate the yolks from the whites. And you're like, okay. And it's like 40 cases of eggs or they're like, we need you to take off the tail of the bean, whatever. You know what I mean? It's like a tiny task that just takes a long time mm-hmm. and it keeps you busy. People call it busy work. Um, but you know, she's there. She's socializing that you, that you can't help. She's going to be there and talking to you. That's, right. That is what it is. But anyway. I've, I've seen this happen a lot, especially around Thanksgiving. Too many cooks in the kitchen. They all they uh, all want to impart their wisdom that was not asked for. Um, it's going to be hard to deter her. Again, I've given this advice already on the show. You know, maybe some alcohol. Maybe she gets more social, yeah. talks to someone else, moves away from the kitchen. That could be something. Get a little Pinot Grige. A little Pinot Grige. Yeah, I don't think I can say <laughs> Grige without That's cringing. That's disgusting. I know. But um, I think I An think Oaky Shard. That <laughs> worse, better. I don't know. Okay, that's better. Um, y- yeah, I like what you said. That, that give her a task that is menial, but um, important. At least important enough to her that does take a long, long time. That's a great idea. All right. Well. Hopefully, uh, that was like a really wide range of individuals. And so hopefully somebody out there can relate and we helped you. Um, And as always, if you'd like to call in with your question, leave a voicemail. Please call us at 856-502-4816 or go to allisoneroman.com slash podcast. Don't forget the E because allisonroman.com is a totally different website and I... The only reason I'm Allison E. Roman across all of my everything is because AllisonRoman.com was taken. And it's what's like on, a what's on that site? It's a child's website that a that a <laughs> father in Canada bought for his daughter. And it's been the same as it is now for fifteen years. And I can't find the person who owns it. They won't sell it to me. But I heard I, anyway. I thought they didn't they call in asking for advice on how to change the domain? No, no, but if they do, they can call us at 856-502-4816. 
Um, Sam, thank you so much for being here. I, I value you, your opinions, your advice, your time, and very grateful to have you. Allison, uh, I'm happy to be here, and good luck with the new podcast. Thank you so much, and we'll be, I'll be listening to yours. I appreciate it. This episode is brought to you by Maker's Mark. Solicited Advice is hosted by me, Allison Roman. Our podcast is produced by Jennifer Sullivan with the help of Elena Rodriguez Villa. Technical production and editing is handled by Red Rock Music, and our theme music was created by Yosef Monroe. And for questions, sponsorship inquiries, or anything else, please visit us at allisoneroman.com slash podcast. <laughs>